Hello everyone. Uh, <clears throat> welcome to chapter 5, Network Modeling. Uh, in this chapter, we are talking about the network modeling, uh, which is one of the most important uh, <clears throat> problems that uh, we see in our world. Uh, for example, the supply chain, uh, you can model it as a network. Basically, in the network modeling, uh, each agent, each uh, center is going to work as a, a node and uh, the connection, the channel of the connection between the different nodes are modeled as a decision variables that you're going to see in the <coughs> next coming slides. Uh, this network modeling is very useful. Uh, we are going to see a lot of the application of this modeling. This uh, you already seen the network uh, in the transshipment uh, problem, the example of the network modeling. But in this chapter, we are going to talk uh, more about the network modeling, and you can find a lot of application of this this type of problem in the reality. So let's start. Uh, the in this chapter we focus on the uh, several important problem uh, transshipment problems shortest path problems the transshipment uh, problem is the type of problem that we have several sources and we want to send out the material to different destinations and when in this type of the problem uh, we want to minimize the uh, cost associated with this transshipment and the shortest path problem is that we want to find uh, for example we are uh, we want to move station one to a station B uh, like in the city and we are trying to find the shortest path that uh, we can take uh, for example, like the ambulance, because the time is very important for this kind of the surface, uh, we can uh, model a CD as a network. Uh, each, each intersection is going to work as a uh, node, and uh, each uh, CD is a, play, is a road that connects different nodes. So we can model a CD as a uh, network and uh, we are trying to find the shortest path which is going to be in this case uh, from hospital to the uh, patient's house and uh, the reverse path which is uh, coming back taking back the patient to the uh, hospital so you can see the you can grasp the concept that this is very important and practical and then we have a, other type of the problem like the transportation and assignment problem and the generalized uh, network problem that you're going to see in this lecture so let's start by the network law problem uh, this type of the problem they have a uh, specific characters uh, in these cases we have several agents like the suppliers or the destination source uh, or the inventory houses that they are represented by a circle and we call them nodes uh, nodes are basically either they receive materials or they send out the materials so we specify them into two main categories also there is third categories that they get materials and send out the materials so uh, they have they can receive material from supply nodes and they can send to another uh, type of the nodes so basically transshipment nodes are the nodes that they get the material and send out to some other nodes. Uh, we usually define the net demand of the each uh, node. So we don't care how many transshipment they have done, but we mostly care about the final nodes. So final demand of each nodes. Usually we use a represent the by the negative numbers in the nodes it means that they are suppliers they want they can send out this much material to other nodes and the positive means that they are demanding they want to receive this kind of the 
material from other uh, nodes. Uh, transshipments is uh, uh, in middle. In middle, that means they get they can be a, they can work as a supplier and the de demanding nodes. But remember that uh, they have a final and net value that either is positive or negative. They cannot be both negative and the positive number at the same time. And then this is a example that we have. Uh, uh, suppose this is an example uh, which is about uh, a specific company. Uh, we have several nodes, uh, New York, which has been labeled as a one, and Boston as a second. Each of these circles represent a node, and uh, uh, most of the time we uh, represent these nodes by numbers. So we label them from one to uh, the number of the nodes we have. We divided the nodes into three categories: uh, suppliers, demanding, and transshipment. The suppliers. Uh, they have a negative values. That means they can send up to this value to the other nodes. And uh, for example, uh, node number seven also is a supplier here, as well as a uh, number one. And then we have demanding uh, nodes. Demanding nodes, they have a positive value next to them. So you can see, uh, node number six and node number three are positive as well as the other nodes that you can see they are positive and then the transshipments nodes are the one that they are in middle so they can get material from other nodes and pass through other uh, nodes so right right now number two station num node number two gets material from node one and passes through this, uh, number three and then we have some channels that connect different nodes to each other. Uh, we call them arc. Uh, for example, between node 1 and 2, we have an arc. Uh, between 2 and 3, we have arc. And then you can see that between 5 and uh, 3, we have two arcs. One is th from 3 to 5, and another one is from 5 to 3. Basically, it means that uh, the number of the materials that has, can be transferred from station 3 to 5 costs $35, these values, and then from 5 to 3, that means they have, can, can cost $40. In terms of the modeling, uh, each of these arcs represent one decision variable. So the number of the decision variables in the network is the number of the arcs that we have. And remember that uh, the sign of the arcs, the direction of the arcs is very important. Uh, most of the time in this chapter, we are working on the uh, something uh, all of the arcs they are directed that means there is a direction you see for example this uh, node 3 and 5 they have two arcs one is toward 3 the direction is from 5 to 3 and uh, one is from uh, 3 to 5 so we call this directed graph directed networks that means the sign of the network is uh, important so as I just told you, uh, <clears throat> we have a uh, cost of associated with each arc and we want to minimize the cost of the, uh, this transport, uh, the, the, this transportation problem. And the number of the parameters are the, is equal to the number of the arcs that we have in the system. There is one more uh, uh, two type of the constraints first of all that uh, we have to satisfy all the requirement and uh, then so uh, for example uh, net uh, this station uh, node number one can send up to this uh, materials but there is uh, one 
small hint that we have to consider uh, in the equation we have to write uh, so let's first talk about the decision variables the decision variables that we have is the uh, number of the arcs that we, we can have so basically uh, we have uh, uh, xij is the number of that trans shipped from a station from node i to node j so uh, for example we have x12 is the number of the cars that shipped from node 1 to node 2 and then uh, from node 2 to node 3 and so on so basically this is a decision variables that we have and as I uh, this is a very important that we remember the number of the variables that we have is equal to the number of the arcs that we have in this system basically the objective function is going to be the number of the materials that has been shipped from node 1 to node 2 which we represented by x12 and the cost associated with this shipment so $30 is the cost of this shipment and the number of the materials that shipped from 1 to 2 is the x12 and uh, we add all the numbers remember for station 3 and 5 we have to consider both ways of the shipments that is we have to consider uh, x1 to x3 to x5 and x5 to x3 as you can see right now 35 dollars is moving from station 3 to 5 and 40 dollars is associated with moving uh, from 5 to 3 and uh, this is the objective function and then we have to define the cost uh, basically uh, in the network flow problems we have three situations uh, total supplies is greater than total demand the total supply me means then then all the summation of the all the negative numbers that we have in the supplies uh, we have to consider the abstract value uh, in term of the positive value so we convert the negative values to positive value and add all of them and then the total demands the total demands is the summation of the, all the positive number in the graph if total supply is more than total demand uh, we write this problem as an inflow minus outflow greater than the supply or demand of each node uh, inflow and outflow I'm gonna explain in a moment but we <clears throat> if the total demand is greater than total supply we have to write inflow minus outflow so the first column uh, is that this is talks about the whole problem itself but this is talks about each node level so if first we have to talk about the total we have to find out whether total supply is greater than total demand if so then at each level of the node at each node we have to have this kind of the constraint so the sign of the equality sign of the constraint depends on the whole program whole problem itself if for example if the total supply is equal to total demand then we have to write inflow minus outflow equal to supply or demand of each node so in our problem in we had uh, two supplier nodes that had 200 and 300 so if we add them up we get uh, 500 so the total supply that we have is 500 now uh, let's look at the number of the demands so the demands we have is uh, 100 plus 60 
plus 80 plus 70 plus 170 so if we add all of these numbers we get the total demand is uh, 480 so the total supply is greater than total demand so we are uh, in this category total supply is more than total demand so in each level of the nose we have to define inflow minus outflow is greater or equal the supply and demand so uh, let's talk about inflow and outflow remember back to the picture that we have uh, whatever comes to the node we call them inflow so right now for station number two x12 is inflow and uh, outflow is the material that goes out from the node for example in for station number two x23 is the one that goes out from this uh, node but uh, let's talk about the node 5 which has uh, several outflow and inflow uh, the outflows are x53 x54 and x56 basically x5j are the outflow of this uh, station and then we have inflow the inflow are uh, x35 x65 and x 7.5 so xi5 are the inflow of this one so basically because uh, the total demand total supply is more than total supply we have to write equations of the equations at each node level inflow minus outflow greater than supply demand that means that uh, for each station for each node we have to consider this equation so for for example for uh, station one for node one we don't have any inflow so the inflow is zero because no no station is sending material to this one so this is zero minus the outflow the outflow is the summation of x1 x2 and x1 x4 so 0 minus x1 2 minus x1 4 should be greater than the demand or supply that in this case greater than minus 200 so the equation becomes uh, x1 minus x1 2 minus x1 4 greater than minus 200 now if you multiply this equation by minus 1 you are going to get x1 plus x2 less than 200 so basically means that this station can send up to 200 to station 2 and 4 which, which is makes sense right uh, because this station has up to 200 materials is it it has 200 materials and then it can send up up to 200 to station 2 and four so let's talk about one more uh, node let's say talk about node 2 in node 2 the inflow is x12 and outflow is x23 so x12 minus x23 should be greater than equal to 100 that's it that's we have here let's talk about node 5 that is a little complex and it has a several nodes as we just thought the inflow is x35 x65 and x75 so if we add them up and then the outflow is x53 x54 and x56 and add them up and subtract from the inflow and the summation of this equation should be more than 170 which is the demand of this <coughs> station also so for each node we write the constraint <coughs> remember that the number of the variables in the node uh, network problem is equal to number of the arcs that we have and the number of the constraint is exactly set equal to number of the nodes that we have as you see in the 
constraint and then we have one more set of the constraint which is non-negative conditions that means all of the xij should be positive we cannot send out negative material because it doesn't make sense right okay so so let's uh, model this uh, problem in the excel solver uh, the effective way to solve uh, to model this problem in the excel is that you write mm, arcs way that means uh, you write the arcs that we have or decision variables that we have uh, first start by the lowest number uh, in this case one one uh, and then in the two side writes the available nodes that we have for example we have a node x12 that means it going to from the station 1 to station 2 and then the from node 1 to node 4 and then from node 2 to node 3 and from node 3 to node 5 and uh, so on so for uh, each node write the available arcs and then that makes the decision variables that we have and uh, this and the, for each arc write the unit cost that you have so from one to two is the the cost associated with this transportation is thirty dollars and from two to three and from one to four is forty dollar and so on so you can write it and then these columns define the decision variables and this column is a coefficient of the objective function so just we need to write the objective function so uh, we can use the sum product the, which is a defined uh, equation in the excel so decision variables are located in the b6 to b16 we select them and then we multiply by coefficient function so this is our objective function and the next one is that the net outflow of each each of these nodes should be greater than uh, of the of the supply or demand so we have to compute the net flow of each uh, node uh, because we don't have any for the node one we don't have any outflow uh, we don't have any inflow because uh, in two uh, in this column we don't have any one then the inflow of the node 1 is 0 but we have outflow so uh, we can write uh, 0 minus x1 uh, this value minus this value and uh, so on but let's consider about the uh, node uh, 5 which is a complex one so inflow of the node 5 is that we have 1 here and 1 here and 1 here so we have 3 inflow for this uh, constraint uh, for this node as well we have uh, three outflow so if you want to add them there is a higher chance that we may we may forget some of the uh, constraints some of the uh, some of the coefficients some of the decision variables that uh, in the constraints and we may have a wrong uh, or incomplete constraint there is a function that we can use for this purpose so the function that we can use is called sum if which is a build function in the excel uh, the sum if function has three uh, component the range and the range that we want to compare the criteria and the criteria itself and the range of the numbers that we want to add them up so it has three components and the, the function name is sum if so because for each node we have to compute the inflow uh, we can use this sum uh, 
if function so the sum if function for this one is going to be so we are uh, adding all these values all these decision variables and we are looking for inflow that they are coming uh, to station node 1 so we can select station node 1 and they, they have to come to this station we have to select this column so this becomes the function that basically this function means that compare these values that they are in E6 to E16 to I6 that one and if these values are true if this condition if I6 is one is equal to one of these conditions sum the cells that they have these values so this is inflow and then there is a, in the excel we can lock some of the cells uh, because the sum range that we are talking is constant for all the uh, all of the nodes we can lock these cells by pressing f4 you can lock all the cells so if this means that we are all, all logging uh, we are just adding all the, this range b6 to b16 uh, are added and then i uh, we can lock on this one so these values are fixed uh, and then i can drag down all these values so you can see that uh, for all of the constraints just this value of the this value of the node has changed the rest is remain constant Now let's compute the outflow. So similarly, I use the sum if function, and uh, the range that I want to add is the decision variables that they are sitting under this column, and I can lock them. So I just press F4, and all of them are locked. And then I'm comparing to outflow. Outflow. So that means they are coming out this uh, from uh, specific cells and. Uh, so I have to compare this value to the range of the nodes that I have. So, and then I can lock the these cells. So this basically sum if gives that uh, compute the values that their value the value of the i six matches with the value of this uh, this column. So let's test the uh, example. Let's put 10 for the new arc. That means I'm sending 10 cars from station 1 to uh, node 4. That means the out, outflow of the station 1 should be 10 and inflow of the station 4 should be 1. It should be 10. So you can test that we have uh, uh, exact 10 for both of the station that we just took and then the net flow is going to be the difference between the inflow minus outflow that uh, we have so let's solve this problem using the solver so our objective function is uh, here and we try to minimize it and the set of the decision variables that we, we have is uh, this decision variables and then the set of the constraint that we have is net flow should be greater than or equal the demand or supply that we have and that's all and then we make sure that the decision variables are non-negative and the type of the solver that we are using is a simplex linear program and we can solve this problem so this is the answer for the problem. You can see each of the values are appeared and uh, all of them are shown in the table. So basically this means that uh, we are sending out 200 from station 1 
which has the maximum possible that we could send but the station 7 which is the supply station we are keeping 200 and uh, we are keeping 20 of them and we are not supplying and then you can see the other the val other values for the uh, uh, in this column you can see the details for example as we just said station 7 sends 280 which two, 210 of them is from station to goes to station number 5 and 70 of them goes to station 6 and the total cost associated with this shipment is 200 $2235 so this is basically solving a model uh, using the solver uh, for the transshipment problem. So if we look at the graphical way, you can see that uh, uh, net, uh, Note 1 is sending uh, 80 and two, 120 uh, to station 4 and 5 and the station 4 is not sending anything out but Atlanta, the station, the Note 5 is receiving 210 from station 7 and it sends out 40 to station 3 and station 2, Note 2 is uh, receiving 120 from station Note 1 and sending out 20 of them to the Note 3 so Note 3 is receiving 40 from station node 5 and 20 from node 2 <coughs> so this is the meaning of the solution that we got from the solver now let's talk about the shortest path problem uh, in this way uh, in this problem we have a set of the nodes and possible arcs that they are, are connected through arcs and we want to find the shortest path between two nodes uh, the example the practical example of this problem is the emergency vehicle vehicles that like the ambulances for example the uh, um, hospital got a call from a patient so we are trying to find the shortest path from hospital to the patient's house um, so you can see this is a very practical problem uh, this is a special case of the transshipment problem that we already solved uh, this problem is a special case of the transshipment problem that we had already in the uh, a previous problem uh, in this case we have just only one supply and one demand node the supply demand node uh, has a supply of minus one and the demand node of uh, that we have has a value of the plus one and the rest of the nodes are the value of the nodes are zero and you can see that the number of the total supplies is equal to total number of the demands that means all of the equation that we are going to have in this problem is equality so let's look at the example here we want to move from station one which is a supply and it has been represented by mine uh, station note number one and the supply of it is minus one we want to move to uh, note 11 and it's uh, uh, the demand for this one is a po uh, positive one uh, this is basically is like uh, using a GPS uh, your destination is given by 11 uh, note 11 and your uh, current position is uh, station number one so you want to move from station one to station 11 and you want to use a GPS the distance between uh, possible points possible nodes or possible intersection is given by the number of hours as well as the quality of the road here we don't care about the quality of the road right now because we just want to uh, 
make our travel our travel shortest shortest as possible so uh, using the similar notation that we use for the previous problem uh, the number of arcs then defines the number of the variables that we have and the number of the nodes defines the number of the constraints we have and remember that uh, for all of the middle points transshipment po po nodes the demand is zero and uh, so the number of inflows minus outflows should be equal to zero uh, so let's model this problem so the objective problems uh, that we can have we just can have uh, <coughs> multiply hours multiplied by decision variables that means uh, three times three hours multiplied by x1 three plus uh, 2.5 hours multiply x12 and so on so we add, uh, we, uh, we add up all these arcs and their associated cost so similar to the previous problem we can have uh, set up uh, decision variables in this way so uh, This means that whether this uh, this is a decision variables that we have, and uh, this is a, a from to estimation that we have. Uh, there is one slight chance. Uh, there is one slight difference between this problem and another problem, uh, the problem that we discussed in the transshipment. But uh, for time being, let's ignore that. Uh, uh, so basically we are set up being the problem as we did for the transshipment problem and then we compute the net flow the net flow is the difference of the inflow minus outflow is equal to the demand the, the destination has a uh, the destination with a note number 11 has a demand of one and the destination for the and the source that we want to move on uh, from we want to start our journey is uh, note number one and, and it has a minus one supply so the net flow should be equal to these values and the objective function is uh, the driving times multiplied by the if the, the, the driving times and the, the roads that uh, we are selecting Note that the nature of this problem is a little different because here we are talking about selecting a row, route or not. In the previous shipment problem, we had talking about uh, uh, sending number of cars, but here is the, the nature of problem is a little different. Here we are selecting or not selecting a, a route. So the decision variables here either could be zero or one that we call a binary decision variables but for time being uh, ignore that we, we are going to talk more about this type of the decision variables in the integer programming chapter but uh, distance is uh, time traveling uh, the time of the traveling is one objective function that we can define there is another way that we can we can uh, select our road based on the scoring of the roads you remember uh, that in the graph we had each row each road had a different score different quality that three point or four point that for each so we can define the objective function in a way that we maximize their rating of the roads that we select but let's work on the just driving hours so we set up a, a excel solver and the objective function is this one Be because we want to minimize the driving time uh, let's uh, put the minimization and then the decision variables are these parameters and our constraints is uh, uh, 
net flows that should be equal to equal to so uh, the constraints that supplied or demands that we have and uh, for time being let's put the uh, decision variables equal to uh, non non negative and then this type of the simplex uh, that we this we are choosing the simplex linear program model and solve this problem so in this case we were lucky that all of these numbers are one or zero <coughs> and uh, so and all the constraints are satisfied and uh, we are getting 11.5 as a number of hours that we want to drive from the station one bring them to the Virginia Beach so this is a our this travel time of the this so let's uh, work on the another uh, objective function of this problem which is uh, score of this problem so I create a new Excel worksheet Excel sheet and uh, I want to minimize the maximum uh, I want to consider the rating so the objective function cell is this but here we want to improve we want to get as much as we could so the rating score the average of the rating score should be uh, maximize the scoring that we can so the type of the objective function is maximized so let's solve this problem and you can see uh, <coughs> still we are lucky that all of these numbers are either zero or one but in some case we may come up with uh, 0.5 that is not true so we are uh, lucky here that all either numbers are zero or one and then the objective function here for the rating is I got 35 and 15.5 uh, is gonna be the time that I, it's gonna take to drive from station 1 to uh, 11 but when I choose the objective function driving time I had a uh, driving time was smaller so let's copy this number to the uh, solution that I got in the uh, so these are the two solution that we, we got so in this solution you can see that uh, I got this second solution based on the uh, optimi uh, optimi optimizing the distance and this I got this solution by optimization of the scoring you can see this solution is better in terms of the timing but this solution is better in terms of the scoring later in the multi-objective function multi-objective optimization you are gonna see that uh, we can have two different functions two, we can optimize two different functions and get a different uh, type of solution and you see because in terms of the timing this objective function is better that means this solution is better the solution that we had in the previous worksheet but in terms of the scoring this function is better so both of these functions are uh, we call them non-dominated solution we are gonna talk more about this kind of functions in the, the one of the chapters that we are gonna see later